We left off last time with the words of Einstein, who said, A conflict between science and religion appears impossible, for science can only ascertain what is, but not what should be. And while scientific and religious methods cannot technically conflict, rational and mystical thinkers are often at odds with each other. Where science and mysticism inevitably clash is over the concept of objective reality. In other words, some unchanging external place that exists independently from any and all perception. Many people, and especially those who are science-minded, make the mistake of thinking that there are facts, or knowable truths that exist independently of subjectivity. In other words, there are things we could know that would continue to be true if every human suddenly disappeared from the universe. These facts are contrasted with opinions, or beliefs that are disconnected from a verifiable objective reality. But in a logical, scientific framework, there are no facts, only well-evidenced theories. Nothing in science is ever proven, because the scientific method works through falsification. It is not like math or symbolic logic in which statements can be definitely true or false. A scientific fact is simply something that has been shown repeatedly and has yet to be falsified, because science is a collective consciousness constructed from the results of repeatable tests. Despite what some scientists might say, the goal of science is not to determine the ultimate and final nature of reality. Science actually works through consilience, which means the convergence of evidence across independent viewpoints. This is a form of precision rather than accuracy. It's like scientists are all shooting bows and arrows in whatever direction they choose. They can know where their arrows land in relation to other arrows, even arrows fired by other scientists. But there may not be a way to know how close they are to the bullseye, or even if the bullseye exists at all. In other words, everything that we can know through scientific testing is nothing more than a collective consciousness composed of many empirically tested opinions. Now this is by no means meant to deconstruct the power of scientific theory, because scientific collective consciousness is very selective about what it accepts. And unlike religious beliefs, which are more or less determined by the whims of a small set of powerful men and texts, scientific opinions are democratic and tend to be mutually reinforcing due to their rigor, reproducibility, and falsifiability. While this in no way makes science foolproof, it does provide scientific consensus with a predictive ability that cannot be matched by religious consciousness. But even the most logically sturdy and seemingly undeniable scientific theories are up for debate. On the flip side of the coin, spiritual, religious, and otherwise mystical thinkers make the mistake of thinking that their personal experience and subjective perspectives are objective reality. Spirit sciences tend to assume that spirituality can be explained or even studied in the current framework of science, which characterizes results as somehow approximating a true or objective reality. Here we will not make that assumption. Rather, we will take subjective experiences and beliefs as their own form of data, in what Daniel Dennett calls the study of heterophenomenology. In other words, treating each individual perspective as a reality of its own. In this framework, objective reality is not some place that exists independently from conscious perspective. Instead, reality is simply the holistic totality of all perspectives. In Hermetic Kabbalah, this is known as the principle of mentalism, which states, all is mind. The universe is consciousness, and consciousness is the universe. And you might say, what is this New Age bullshit? Scientific convergence of evidence often conflicts with our personal realities. For example, one study might say, spanking predicts domestic violence in adulthood. But people will respond, I was spanked and I'm not violent. Another study might say, all matter is made of extremely tiny particles that are mostly empty space. And people will respond, well, I'm not mostly empty space. And yet somehow, both the scientific objective consensus and the personal subjective experience can be true at the same time. It is the goal of this channel to treat these paradoxes with respect, rather than as problems that need to be resolved. When our personal experience differs from the results of rigorous scientific evidence, that is where interesting things start to happen. There is no need to assume that scientific statements are the end-all be-all of objective reality. After all, the universe as we know it is nothing but perspective. Even the interpretation of any scientific result is inherently perspective-based. We can't know anything but our own viewpoint. But this does not make our perspective perfect. Anything we think we know about some reality outside of ourselves is nothing but an approximation of ourselves. This is what I call the paradox perspective. The inability of any perspective to know anything that is not itself. 
all paradoxes are an emergent result of this paradox of consciousness, that perspective can never entirely know its own being. As soon as a perspective describes the entirety of its own existence, there is suddenly a new thing that the perspective must describe, the holistic description of the holistic description. This is certainly a confusing infinite regression, but like all things, it becomes very clear when we visualize it. To describe yourself is to create a new thing that needs describing. Yourself plus the new version of you that has the knowledge of yourself. As Alan Watts said it, I define myself in terms of you. I know myself only in terms of what is other. Trying to define yourself is like trying to bite your own teeth. And thus, our perceptual reality is broken down into two distinct aspects. The thing that does the describing, what some have called the self, or the indescribable, i.e. God, and the resulting description, what some have called the ego. One is untouchable, indescribable, and holistic, while the other demands to be divided and reduced. Truly, these two aspects are one and the same, yin and yang, logic and emotion, the trees and the forest. Dangerous fanaticism arises from one of two imbalances between these forces, when reverence for the unknown is not informed by what we know, and when what we know is not kept in check by the realization that we cannot know everything, or even anything at all. But in order to exist as conscious beings, we must maintain a perpetual state of conflict between the two, the paradox perspective.